Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And I think you probably recognize this guy that is on my screen because he's one of my go-to astrologers, Adam with uh, Stargazing Astrology, right? I got that right. And he has a YouTube channel. I'm going to put all his information in the bottom of this video. So you want to go check out his YouTube channel. And he does have openings, I think. Do you have openings available? Oh, yes. Available? I, yes. So I, um, the thing is, guys, after people appear on channels, they get booked. So if you're interested, I would suggest you go ahead and check him out because he's really good. You're about to see that right now. He's going to talk about, well, he's going to talk about Hunter Biden because Hunter Biden is in the news. Is he not? He's finally taking the gloves off and he's going to take on Fox News and he's just tired of being treated like this. And I don't blame him and I'm happy to see it. And then, Adam, mm -hmm. if that wasn't enough, he's going to talk about Mike Johnson. And we're going to see what's going on in these people's astrology. I love it because I get to kind of peek behind the, the velvet curtain and see what's going on in their energy and in their lives. And hopefully that'll explain why they are freaking crazy, right? Okay, Adam, I'm going to let you take this over. Uh, give me just a second. I'll switch the screen over, I think. And then, all right. Yep, there you go. Go for it. Tell us all about it. All right. Hi, Susan. Thank you so much for having me on the channel. This is going to be an exciting day. Lots of good information. So everyone, really quickly, I'm currently offering discounted astrological readings across the board. So we're talking nice. all types, natal charts, transit charts, relocation charts, relationship charts. So anything like that, please, please, again, send me an email the, uh, um, in the um, description box, all the information. Okay, so I have some interesting stuff going on. Um, there has definitely been a good amount of political drama, and I'm going to focus in on a couple of those um topics today so today i'm going to talk about yes hunter biden um so as we all know hunter biden used to do drugs um and then his brother died he had an extremely hard period you know we all go through rough periods um and someone like you know uh someone like hunter biden is no exception um so what happened was he was a. Uh, uh, he had some nude photos on his laptop he brought his laptop in um, to get it fixed. Um, those naked photos were found and then they were exposed. Um, so yeah, so just kind of a lot of drama here. And so, um, you know, people like Fox News found the photos. Uh, someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene was kind of showing people the photos, you know, things like this, you know, people will do anything in order to try to expose um, uh, individuals, you know, for power plays uh, and, and the like. Um, so now he's talking about suing Fox News for revenge, porn, and defamation. Um, so what he's also doing is he's also demanding a retraction on this, you know, so something like an apology. Um, however, though, um, the question is, is an apology good enough? You know, if something like this has happened, it's just saying, I'm sorry, going to fix the case? No, this is extremely embarrassing. Um, this is definitely an invasion of privacy. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, there were definitely laws that were broken. Um, yeah. So uh, then we know, um, you know, that the uh, the Republicans, you know, were also trying to, you know, uh, of course, you know, bring Joe Biden in on this. However, this really had nothing to do with Joe Biden. It's Hunter Biden. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about Hunter Biden's astrology chart and some of the aspects um, that that may have kind of brought this out because the astrological chart within itself is sort of like the space time flow of the continuum of events. And and um, the question is, why did he attract these events to him, you know, as part of his karma, as part of his learning? Because as we know in life, right, when we go through life, we attract situations and events to yeah. us. Because there's always learning and and you know kind of a learning and uh, learning and growing process. Um, so so what I did was I dissected his astrology chart and I looked at some of the aspects that which may that um relate to things like uh, lawsuits and relate to things like sexuality and relate to things like getting exposed and I actually found some pretty interesting stuff. Um, so off the bat, his sun sign is in Aquarius. Um, and what and uh, what's so interesting about this is Aquarius rules the realm of politics under the umbrella of the political spectrum. And of course, right, he's related to Joe Biden, who is the president, who's a politician. So, of course, Hunter Biden is automatically going to be put in that realm of uh, politics um, in relation to his Aquarius sun sign. <clears throat> 
So I wanted to look a little deeper. I looked at his Mars sign. Mars has to do with our ego assertion. Mars also has to do with things like sexuality. So he has Mars in the sign of Aries. So this was a, a bit of a red flag here. Um, the reason why Aries is the first sign. Aries is rash. Aries is impulsive. Um, Aries is known to be a daredevil. Um, you know, so Aries is also known for things like experimentation. You know, as we know, he was doing drugs. Um, Aries can also have kind of reckless energy as well. Um, so Mars and Aries was definitely a bit of a red flag in relation to, uh, you know, some of this scandal stuff that's going on here. Um, the good thing about the Aries energy, though, is that it's it's hot and it's steamy and it rises up. But Aries energy tends to kind of fizzle out over a matter of time because that energy is not about sustaining. It's really about getting things up, getting things going, getting things hyped up, but, um, uh, you know, kind of fizzles out. So that is something that tell me uh, that is an indication that tells me that there's a good chance that this this thing may not drag out for years and years and years, which is good. Um, the next aspect that I noticed was a red flag was the, his planet Jupiter is in Scorpio. So Scorpio rules sexuality, it rules taboos, it rules, uh, you know, things like um, power plays. Jupiter is uh, the planet that expands things. So whenever you have Jupiter and Scorpio, those Scorpionic energies get expanded. Um, oh so God. that really makes a lot of sense that a Jupiter and Scorpio would have something like this. Um, Scorpio is also like the detective. So Scorpio energies, things get kind of dug up from the surface. Again, taboos, sexuality, uh, power plays. And this is really all what's going on. You know, um, this is really kind of one big power play. Um, so that was also another red flag. Um, what I also found interesting was his Chiron is an Aries. So the planet Chiron represents the wounded healer. Um, and Chiron, the position of Chiron and uh, the sign placed in Chiron is where we sort of fall short. So what's interesting here is he sort of um, falls short with that Aries energy. So this could be issues around self-identity, self-assertion, and issues with personal power. So that last one really kind of rung a bell, the issues with personal power. That goes to tell me that part of why this is happening is that... Um, there are issues around personal power that he's having to deal with. Um, this also relates a lot to uh, his planet Pluto, which is in a retrograde aspect in his natal chart. Pluto is the plant planet that has to do with power. Individuals with a Pluto in retrograde in their natal chart are dealing with issues of either overstepping power or others having... Um, power over them that is just part of that pluto energy that needs to eventually get balanced and is born and is out of balance with individuals born in a pluto retrograde so this has a lot to do with um issues with self-identity issues with self-assertion and really issues around gaining his own personal power um you know and and and, and really putting up good boundaries um, sure, he was definitely out of bounds in the past with his drugs and with posting nude photos of himself, you know, things like that. However, he didn't go and post those nude photos of himself all over the internet, right? Those <laughs> those photos were stolen, Yeah, you know, you know, something like that. So this is for him, you know, I, I'm really seeing this is a big, this is kind of a, a, a big, you know, sort of, a, um, you know, kind of, kind of evolutionary call for him to be able to really take his power back yes, um yes. you know and and then regain his sense of privacy um so now the question is is um do i see that happening anytime soon so i looked at some of his astrological aspects um so these are the uh transiting aspects so the planets that are transiting in relation to his birth chart um and then these have a lot to do um, with with sort of the flow of events that happen throughout life. So the first aspect that I see um, is that, um, let's see, for the short term, he has a Mars squared ascendant. So Mars represents battle. Uh, Mars represents um, crisis. Um, 
Mars also also represents things like ego assertion. So Mars in a square aspects indicate that he's going to be kind of under a lot of stress and a lot of strain. A square aspect um, is very dynamic, creates a lot of tension. It creates a lot of drive. It creates a lot of movement. So there's just a lot of movement going on there. Uh, Venus is sitting next to Saturn. So Venus stands for relationship. Saturn is the law of karma, the Lord of karma. So yes, there is an aspect in which he put out that energy and it is coming back to him. So there is definitely a karmic lesson going on here, you know, sort of a, 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 a parallel with what you sow is what you reap in relation to this Saturn aspect. Um, he also has Mars sitting next to Chiron again, that highlighted Chiron aspect in which he is, uh, you know, kind of needing to learn more self-assertion. Mars sitting next to there is actually going to help with that self-assertion because Mars is really a go-getter type of energy. Um, he has his sun sign in a square aspect to his natal sun. So the sun represents the ego. A square aspect is a challenge to the ego. So he's going through just a lot of ego challenges with that. Um, and then also he has Mercury square aspect. Mercury's communication. Again, those square aspects are challenges. So there's challenges with communication with those square aspects. You kind of butt heads with things. Um, and there's just a lot of controversy and uh, drama with square aspects. So those are the short term. Um, in the long term, he has, this one is really interesting. He has the planet Pluto. Uh, in an aspect. So whenever I see Pluto in a strong aspect, um, I understand that this is a slow evolutionary process of someone that is really learning some sort of soul growth and soul lesson. The reason why is Pluto is the slowest moving planet in the chart. And Pluto really is all about deep soul lessons, things like slowly purging, um, you know, anything having to do with those power plays also has to do with Pluto too. So what I see this is this is more something that is going to affect him um, on a much deeper level. That's going to be much more slow and transformational because it's having to do with Pluto. Um, and then that Pluto aspect is in relation to Saturn and Saturn's the Lord of Karma and it's in a square aspect. So again, challenges, you know, wow. the, this, yeah. So, so this, this is the, the strongest aspect that I saw. So this is a slow, deep, slow, long lasting transformational process with, with the way that, uh, you know, his karma is playing out. So those square aspects, you know, they create, um, you know, the, the, they create movement, tension, dynamic square aspects are, are unsettled. But there's the ability to kind of burn through a lot in a short amount of time. So it's almost a way in which someone, you know, there's the potential here to kind of really learn a lot of those lessons with with the challenges that arise with those square aspects. Um, so a couple other aspects. He has a Jupiter trine aspect. This is really nice. This is going to benefit him. Uh, Jupiter represents our morals. Um, a trine is supportive. So a Jupiter trine aspect automatically shows me that he has some sort of support there, some sort of support system, whether it be an inner guide or some sort of uh, higher power that he may reach out to or individuals that want to support him through this. So that trine is really going to help him. <clears throat> a couple other things that he has going on in his birth chart. He has a strong sun Venus conjunction. Venus is harmonious sitting next to his sun sign, which is ego structure. People with a sun Venus, they know how to smooth things out in the long run. So he has that going for him. He also has his moon sitting next to Mercury. That 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 indicates a sharp intellect, a good wit, and the ability to be able to kind of smooth things out with communication. So a, a moon Mercury, uh, moon sitting next to Mercury generally is a good communicator. So he has that going for him as well. Um, and then the last thing he has going for him is he has his north node, which is his evolutionary path in Pisces. So Pisces North Node is an interesting placement. The reason why is because Pisces has now, uh, Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac. And it's all about undoing things. In this world, we're taught to build up and sustain structures. The, nor the individual with the North Node in Pisces is on an evolutionary path of learning to let things go downstream. So... Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's it's kind of a it's sort of a paradox, right? Because in this world it's like build, build, sustain, build, 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 build. Pisces is like you've already reached the top with Pisces many moons ago. And now you're more about letting things go downstream. 
Um, so that can also be a, a benefit as well as far as him being able to perhaps move on from things. Um, and Pisces, uh, Pisces is really all about emotional clearing and emotional healing. Wow. That, it, that does tie it all up and you can see how those things fit together now. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, what would you say? The only thing I, I like to say about this is that when you were first talking about these, um, in his natal chart, which is your, he talked about two different things, right? If you're not into astrology, his natal chart is what you're born, where the planets were, where you were born. That's kind of fixed energy to a degree. Uh, yes. And then transits are things that kind of happen as the planets kind of transit, right? So the yes. natal chart, you were talking about people born with these types of um, placements with Mars and whatnot. I don't want people to hear you say that and then them to go, oh my God, I've got this placement. You know, I don't want to end up like Hunter Biden with my naked pictures on Fox News, right? I mean, it's not going to happen, right? But um, this is just one way. You know, when you have those natal placements, really, it's up to you how to move through that energy. This is not a set in stone, I'm a Virgo, I'm always going to be a nitpicking, because I'm a Virgo, I, a nitpicking. You know, yeah, see, two Virgos here, perfectionist, right? We can move through that. We can move above that, right? So wouldn't you tell people that have some of those same placements, you're not going to end up necessarily going through what Hunter Biden is going through. Exactly. Um, that's exactly right. Another thing, too, is um, for example, someone may have their Mars and Aries. There may be 10 people with a Mars and Aries. However, everyone may have a different house placement and then a different aspect. Someone may have yeah. Mars uh, in a strong aspect to the sun. Someone may have Mars in a harsh aspect to the moon. Someone may have Mars in a harmonious aspect uh, to Venus. You know, there's right. all different aspects as well. So it's, it's pretty complicated. Um, right. That's why you get your astrology chart done by Adam. Yes. <laughs> That's why. So he explains it to you because, because I can't, we can't go into it here, but I just want you guys to not freak out and go, you know, it, it's it, look, um, Hunter lost his brother, his, I mean, his, his, and then he lost his mom. He lost his sister. This, this guy signed up for a soul contract that's a very unique, like all of our soul contracts are very <laughs> unique. And then you overlay that, his astrology, and he chose to deal with that in a certain way, which, mm -hmm. which looks like, like, I like the way you just put it all together with a bow on it, because it, it all makes sense, right? Like that, that would be very helpful for me if I were Hunter and, or if I was this person that you were doing this reading for, I could say, oh, wow, I get it. Now I get why these things are happening and I get how I can continue to move through that energy. So that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always there's always key things, which I sort of explained when I was explaining him as like red flags. You know, I mean, there's you right. know, red flags, blue stars, yellow smiley faces. You know, those are pretty much all the same thing. But yeah, there's always... I, I always see at least several things that really strongly indicate a specific uh, incident or, you know, some, something right. like that. So mm -hmm. you know where to go looking. So you're like, okay, this yeah. is probably impacting this person's chart. I need to look here. So yeah. that's what you're, this is like a, a red flag in a sense. This is an indicator. Something mm -hmm. more is going on and it's probably impacting their life. And I should probably look at that. Exactly. Yes. There's Very always cool. certain aspects that indicate certain things. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. do you feel like, so having said all that, you, you said two things that were almost a little contradictory in a sense oh. to me, to my layman here ears, which yeah. was Pluto. Was it Pluto? That is a very slow. You said there's a slow transit. Yeah. Yeah. So Pluto. And then you said Aries is fast. So I'm like, oh, which okay. one is going to win the hare or the rabbit? Okay. So, so, so Pluto is more, Pluto has to do with the, the evolution of the soul. Okay. Mars is fast. It's quick moving. It's dynamic. So Mars is going to make the quicker day to day, okay. to day to day decisions and the more rash and impulsive decisions. The okay. evolution of his soul growth over slow. time, that more has to do with Pluto. Okay. Yeah, okay. that makes sense.
No, it, it makes sense. And I, I feel like what you're saying is he's he's basically has an opportunity here to stand up for himself and to close out this part of this soul contract. And then perhaps the way spirit does, he could he could be challenged again in the future, right? If, if Biden yeah. is going to be another four years in office, then Hunter is going to be another four years as the president's son. I don't think they're ever going to stop trying to go after him. So a spirit often brings you the lesson more than one time just to make sure that you really, you really kind of got it down. So mm -hmm. um, even after he gets through this, the Pluto, the slow part of his soul evolution, to me, what you're saying is this, he could experience some more sort of challenges or lessons as he goes through his life. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, this is, it's so interesting because he has his Mars and Aries and he has Chiron and Aries. So, right. Mars Aries is the first sign. Aries is the ram. Aries dives head first and doesn't either thinks about it later or just doesn't think about it at all. And Mars represents our ego assertion. So a Mars and Aries is already prone to things like accidents, head injuries, getting itself in trouble. Um, I mean, Mars and Aries is great for a warrior and someone who wants to play sports and like a speed car racer, you know, something like that. But then he also has this issue around the Chiron and Aries, you know, which, which, you know, which is all, wow. which is around self-assertion um, wow. and standing up on his own two feet, you know? So he's, he's wow. just got a lot of uh, karma around that Aries energy. He totally is. It's like on one hand, he's probably hot tempered and <laughs> wants to smack you back or get you back. And then on the other hand, he's wounded about that very, reaction he yes. doesn't know what whether he's coming or going so yep. i love that he's standing in his power in the legal realm which i think is the right realm for him to deal with this karma that he's dealing with right instead of like lashing out himself or doing something kind of aries right and we're not dogging aries guys i i love you guys you aries people but it's just like um it's just like virgos we all have our we all have our cross to bear we all <laughs> have our little thing that that makes us who we are zo in a zodiac uh sign mm -hmm. kind of way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know the the um that energy uh the the, the legal energy more represents uh the archetype of saturn um oh, right yeah yeah because saturn has to do with the law things like justice things like right. that so he is playing it um safe and he's playing it correct in Good. the eyes of the public in the eyes of justice thank uh, god i truly believe just like you that um that he's doing the right thing as far as as far as the, you know going um legal with this yeah mm -hmm. and i'm glad he feels like he can given that his father is president. I'm sure that all these things were taken into account, but he's standing on his own. He's standing up for his own. He's like, I'm still John Q citizen. I'm still a citizen of the United States and I deserve to be treated like such. And yep. anybody yep. else that has revenge porn against them, that's against the law. And you can definitely take measures to protect yourself. So I'm happy to see it. I feel bad for the guy, but I'm glad that he's sort of like the underdog you want to root for, you know? So I'm yep. glad he's, he's getting back on his uh soul path and getting getting his wits back about him and i, I think he's going to be okay yeah yeah I, I i i think so too i i think in the long run this will just been a, a really good lesson for him um and that he will definitely overcome this and, and be able to move on nice 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 mm -hmm. nice so yeah. are you ready to move on to johnson i just can barely yes. wait yes. <laughs> just barely <laughs> Oh Lord, let's go. Let's do it. What All do right, you have for Johnson. All right, so Mike Johnson, just like um, Hunter Biden, is also an Aquarius, <laughs> of course, oh, right? Wow. This is the realm of politics. Everyone, almost everyone, uh, you know, politician, everyone associated with the political realm has uh, some sort of strong Aquarius placement or other placement that is really close to that. Um, so he was born during the full moon. So he has Aquarius, Sun, Leo, Moon. So what happens when an individual is born during the full moon, the potency of their moon sign is more heightened because the moon is full when they're born. Werewolf, werewolf. Are you about to tell us he's a werewolf? Because I could go with that. I, that that makes sense. No? Okay, never mind. There's probably not a werewolf thing in astrology, but okay, I had to. Actually, if there were a politician that were gonna be a werewolf it could be, <laughs> even though i don't know he almost kind of looks more like a weasel 
Yeah, 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 it does. It does look so, like yeah, yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, yeah, I would say more weasel. I'm uh, sorry okay. to interrupt you. Go ahead, dear. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, okay, so uh, Aquarius sent Leo moon. So he was born during a full moon. So what happens, those individuals born during a full moon sign, the, the potency of that lunar energy is stronger. So the moon stands for our needs, our fundamental need to be able to fit in. So a Leo moon loves to be the center of a t- tension um and if their lunar needs are not being met then things like power plays and power trips happen leo moon thrives on adoration uh being the center of attention things like this so he really needs that in order to be able to operate um and the and um you know he it's so so for example right he is the uh you know he, he gets to be the head of his party right now However, he's not the president. Leo, for example, wants to be the president, right? So, of course, with that full moon in Leo, he's automatically going to resent Biden because he's not being able to be up there. Um, So just like Hunter Biden and like most of these politicians I see, he has, of course, a Pluto in retrograde. Pluto represents power. Individuals born with the Pluto in that retrograde motion are learning all about the give and take of power, not to abuse that or not to let others overstep them. Um, So again, a lot of the issues that he's dealing with as he goes through his space-time continuum and as he walks on this earth learning his lessons have to do with power plays. Um, So he, (laughs) like Hunter Biden, also has his Mars ding 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 in aries really wow yeah so again that mars and aries energy is combative you know what i mean it's it's almost like uh you know it's it it, it, you know it 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 very much makes sense right because you got to be kind of hardcore you know you you got to be kind of a fighter you know kind of a bulldog um you know in in order to you know kind of kind of toot your own horn right and that's what these individuals have done that's why they're so famous right because they've toot their own horn. Um, so that can be very much a Mars and Aries thing. Um, so those are some of his major aspects. He has some strange Venus aspects with the planet Uranus, showing that he has a bit of an unstable character and that he um, Uranus is kind of like an earthquake. Um, so this is an aspect that actually really indicates that he could be kind of maybe easily swayed and sort of bendable, you know, as, as, as you know, and uh, maybe... Uh, you know, this aspect, he can maybe be uh, easy, easier uh, um, uh, manipulated, you know, or, or something like that. Um, so those are some of his major aspects. Um, so now that, you know, so as we know, Marjorie, she wants to oust him if he gives aid to, you, to Ukraine. Uh, Marjorie within herself is an interesting character because she has taken it upon herself to be the uh should we say ruler of the world right and what she is is she is basically a loud mouth who's not really gonna end up maybe ever get voting voted out or maybe not voted out for a while because she is in such a red district however she has not as much power as she thinks um so again marjorie actually has that pluto in retrograde but what's funny about her chart is she has these aspects in which she feels like she is the queen of the world, but she has the planet Saturn that keeps shoving her down. <laughs> the Lord of Karma. So you see it happen again and again. She rises up, she makes threats, she thinks she's on top of everything, and everyone kind of goes, shut up, shut up, <laughs> shut up, shut up. And that's Saturn, right? Because Saturn will keep you in line. And so that's just part of her evolutionary path too, is, is to think she's top dog, and then for people just to say, no, 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 no. So basically she, you know, so, yeah, so, so. Oh my God. Yeah. She's gotten as far as, as she can go. Um, And yeah, I don't see her, I I don't see her, you know, gaining any more power, maybe recognition for being annoying. Yes. But um, that's not something that uh, any normal person would really want. Um, Yeah. yeah, So, so the question here, you know, is whether or not he's going to bend under marjorie's threats um i personally don't think so just because she gets her checked by a larger law by a law that's greater than her um whether she wants to believe it or not um what i'm seeing here is the possibility for some sort of negotiation with the democrats i'm seeing that as the potential for for um 
him. I'm seeing that as a greater potential in relation to some of these aspects. Um, so let me take a look at some of his short-term aspects. So yeah, so look, so for example, the first aspect is the planet Mercury, which represents communications in aspect to Uranus. Uranus is sudden and unexpected events. Uranus is uh, the planet that moves on its orb in a direction different from the rest of the planets. In the sense, Uranus, uh, you know, is all about new and unusual ideas, peculiar things, things out of the blue. So for example, this aspect can very much indicate um, you know, some sort of collaboration with the Democrats, for example. Um, he has his Mars-Pluto aspects, you know, again, indicating that there's just a lot of power plays going on here, a lot of pressure around power plays and trying to keep that power. But knowing that if he needs to keep that power, he's going to need to make some sort of compromise. Um, so we oh. have a, a oh Venus God. aspect. So he has some Venus aspects as well, Venus squared aspects. Um, which could maybe affect his popularity in relation to like the MAGA, for example. Um, he could take a hit with them with these score aspects, but that might just be something and that's uncomfortable that he's going to have to deal with because we all have to deal with square aspects. Um, he also has a Mars-Jupiter aspect. Mars, again, that Mars represents that energy. His Mars in Aries is really intense. It squares the planet Jupiter. So a square aspect is intense. A Mars-Jupiter individuals could do stuff like overestimate their capabilities, um, give promises they can't keep, you know, something like that. So this could also be an indication of someone who's backstepping. Um, so th this aspect kind of throws a loop in there, you know, so we're really going to kind of have to wait and see what happens. Um, the long-term aspects... Um, uh, there's definitely some change that's going to happen here. The reason why is because um, the planet Uranus, which represents change and breaking through your old habit patterns, is sitting on his ascendant. So the ascendant is the rising, and that has a lot to do with our direction. So any planet sitting on the horizon is all about um, a new beginning, a new cycle, beginning a new cycle with things. So there's a lot of change that's going to be happening with him. Um, he's in his, his power is culminating right now. The planet Pluto, which represents power is sitting on the midheaven, which is the highest point in his chart. So this is called a Pl Pluto culmination. It's sitting, it's sitting in the most prominent position. So he's really at the height of his power right now. Um, for him to ever think he's going to be president, which I'm not sure if he does or not, it would be more of something like a fantasy. Um, cause that's never going to happen. Um, <laughs> and, uh, he also has, uh, the planet Neptune square Jupiter. This, this is a tricky aspect this is for anyone to deal with. And the reason why is because um, Neptune in a square aspect can create a uh, delusions of grandeur. Um, things like charlatans, not uh, um, foggy, not telling the facts, lying. Things like this can happen with a Neptune square and Neptune squaring Jupiter. So it's blowing up that Neptunian energy. This can create chaos, confusion, um, and a charlatan type of behavior. So this is in the long term. So, so uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be kind of tricky, tricky what's going on because thing, change is inevitable for him. He's going to be r rising to his highest position of power. And then he has this Neptune-Jupiter aspect. You throw that in and you're not sure what's coming out of his mouth, if it's truth or lies or if it's a whatever. So, so there's kind of an interesting mixed bag going on for him. Um, the long term 100% indicates that there is going to be um, a change in something that's going to be big and that he will continue to stay um, in the political limelight for a while with this. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that really helped me. Cause, um, I can see, I, I could see how when you said that, you know, it triggered something that, that he thinks that he can play both sides. And, and, and if the Demo, you know, if the, if the Republicans fall off a cliff, then he can go to the Democrats and say, hey, I was nice. Remember me? I helped you get that funding. And, uh, you know, 
keep voting for me, you know, while I keep these Republicans in line or whatever. I, you know, he, he definitely has that shell game charlatan kind of energy, like which one is the shell under? You know what I mean? We don't know. Um, wow, that is fascinating. But it's interesting that you're saying in the long term, well, he's at the culmination of his power. So even though he's going to kind of stay in politics, he's he's not going to be at a higher power quotient or potential than he is now. Correct. Like yeah. So so the long term, which is, uh, you know, approximately the next uh, three months to maybe a year. Oh, with okay. Pluto, because Pluto is uh, a lot slower moving. It's going to be the culmination of his power. Yeah, so that, that it's it's basically like he's kind of at his high point kind of now. Okay. And that, and that it's going to kind of sustain for a while, which nice. also is another indication that uh, mini me isn't going to be able to oust him. Mini me. Marjorie. <laughs> Right. So <laughs> it just means that he's still he's still got game. He's still in the he's still in the game. And that timeline is three months to a year, you're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Approximately. Roughly. Low. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give him three months. I'm going to give him three months. That's what I give this man. Three months. Three months. And, and honestly, he's on borrowed time at that. Thank God his astrology is helping his butt out because otherwise he'd be under a a van labeled MTG by now. Um, so a uh, fascinating, anything else about, uh, Johnson? Um, yeah. Another thing that, uh, and I mentioned that before too, that the planet Uranus <laughs> is sitting in, on his ascendant. So the ascendant is the cusp of the first house and planets that are sitting there are introducing a whole new round of that energy to move across your chart. Uranus represents change instability uranus is the earthquake but it could be like instability gains or instability losses so things are just you know it's 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 unsettled energy right it's changeable energy you know so this is this is also an aspect that can indicate like he blew it and like he's gonna be done just like overnight you know something like that so I'm going for 500, Alex. I'd like to do instability losses, please. Yeah, He's, okay. I don't. I don't see. I don't see him. Um, I just don't think he can hang on. Like the picture I'm seeing is he's hanging on a cliff, his little fingers, you know, and that's he's hanging on by his fingertips. And I just don't think he has the the wherewithal or the support or the energy, or yeah. maybe even the good astrology to last more. Um, more than three months. And I don't know if that's like uh, his speakership or if, if that's his tenure in Congress, because I do see yeah. some things coming for him. And Uranus is like, isn't that like sudden, like, boom, like, mm -hmm. it's, like it's the power like, card in the tarot, like, boom, uh, uh, your life <laughs> is now very different. <laughs> Get used to it. Uh huh. It's the great awakener. What it does <laughs> is it takes <laughs> us and awakes us out of our stupors. So the bigger stupor you're in, um, the more it's going to have to shake you and, and, and awake you. Uh, because what it really is, it's all about forward movement. So, so being stuck in the mud, being stuck in old traditions, you know, being stuck in the past with things, it, it's like the slap in the face is going to be a lot harder with that Uranian energy. Uranus, like, get with the program. Like, I'm forward thinking. Okay? I'm, I'm going to have to, like, I'm going to have to awaken you somehow, whether it be getting smacked in the face, whether it be uh, getting hit by a car, whether it be whatever, you know. Losing your job, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yep. All of a sudden, I have a strong desire to know about these transits in my own... <laughs> <laughs> my own chart i'm over here writing down ask adam about okay because like if you got an uranus uranus i mean you would want to know about that right because like if that's a transit that's coming up you would yeah. like to maybe piece together what you can to be prepared for that yes yes if if say for example uranus is in a very highly uh you know in, in a very high uh you know it's, it's very highly aspected in your transit chart if it's on like a sensitive point or in a strong aspect to another specific planet then it's really going to play a lot more importance importance in your uh in your life well all right poor yeah. mr johnson okay 
Another thing about him is his totem animal is definitely the weasel. <laughs> and, and that is, <laughs> that's right. that is poor, poor weasels everywhere, but you know, sorry, weasel. <laughs> yeah, that's true. His totem born on a full moon. See, I didn't know. I love you guys, you astrologers. Cause I learned so much, right? Like I didn't realize born on a full moon means that the lunar phases really affect you more. I mm -hmm. have a friend that can, that just does not like full moons. Like she, oh. it, they do not do well for her. Like, um, and I'm going to ask her, she was born on a full moon because that would make sense. I think maybe the intensity of the full moon is just too much for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else about Mr. Johnson? Because I feel like we've already sealed the fate on his fate. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's done. <laughs> he's done. He's a weasel and he's done. Okay. Very cool. So you wanted to talk about the, what's coming up? The new moon? Yeah. Yeah. So May 7th. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, you know, just do a brief analysis on the uh, astrological forecast for May 7th, which is going to be the new moon in Taurus. So what we have here is we have, uh, count them, five planets that are going to be in Taurus. Uh, so this is uh, strong with the Earth element. So Taurus represents things like the palette. Taurus represents security, represents nature, it represents grounding. There's also a strong element of shamanism and dream time type of work that goes on with Taurus as well, because Taurus uh, can also be a natural healer. Um, so, so coming up is a great time to do things like gardening, to kind of let your hair down, to relax, to enjoy the more sensual pleasures, things like good meals, hot baths, massages. These all lie within the realm of Taurus. Um, gardening. The energy of Taurus really thrives on nature and being quiet. Um, so, so this is definitely going to be a great time for that. Also a great time for enjoying anything having to do with beauty because Taurus rules Phoenix. And Venus is the goddess of love and beauty. So this is a great time for that as well. So what it is not a great time for is making things like rash decisions. Um, um, you know, and those, you know, rash, rash decisions having to do maybe with things like finances, stocks, uh, crypto, right? You know, if there's something that... Um, you want to uh, move around in crypto, this is not the best time to do it. Taurus is all about sustaining and plotting. So, so if there's something that you have been working on, like a project, something that you're sort of plotting on and working on right now is the great, a great time to do that. Anything that's going to affect your sense of security, especially having to do with property, real estate, and finances, not a good time to make a risky move. Um, What's interesting is we also have Mars and Aries right now. And um, after the show, we're all, you know, you're all going to be a, uh, what is it? You're all going to know so much about Mars and Aries. You're going to be experts on Mars and Aries. So Mars, <laughs> yeah, so, so Mars and Aries wants to act impulsively and act rash. So um, we can't deny that, that, that Mars and Aries is energy, energy is going on. So it also, it's a great time for things like action, adventure, and travel as well with that Mars and Aries. Um, Mars and Aries brings a little push of the daredevil, but I would say don't daredevil in things like that having, having to do anything with security. Daredevil in a, an adventure trip, you know, maybe skydiving, bungee jumping, snorkeling, things like that that are going to activate that, that Aries energy, um, you know, with the need of a uh, passion, um, excitement and adventure. Um, so I definitely recommend with that. Uh, let's see here. The North node, which is our collective, uh, um, uh, direction of evolution that is also in Aries as well um, and then the south node is in Libra so I mentioned this uh, you know um, on a couple of videos as well the south node stands for um, what we're comfortable with whenever the south node is in Libra it's really important that we have harmonious and compatible relationships as our foundation to be able to move into that north node in Aries which is really all about independent action so if there is uh, something that you want to be an entrepreneur at you know something you want to start something you want to initiate something you want to trailblaze the north node in Aries is a great opportunity for doing that and the north node in, will be in Aries now uh uh, for for 
uh, you know, at least another six, eight, nine months, something like that. The North wow. Node transits through each sign for uh, for a year and a half. You know, so we have we have that Aries, uh, that North Node in Aries that's going to be going on now. Uh, you know, for for a a, 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 a while to come. Um, so the majority of the planets are in uh, Aries, Taurus. Uh, Saturn is still in Pisces. Saturn in Pisces is a great time for meditation, contemplation, self-reflection, things like that. Uh, the planet Pluto, which represents our power structures, has now gone into retrograde. Um, so, the, of course, the power structures are being reviewed. Pluto and Aquarius is all about the political spectrum. Um, so, again, mm -hmm. politics and power plays are very, and, and uh, review around those are going to be very much highlighted. You know, we're seeing those, uh, take, for example, someone like Donald Trump, right? He's having to review, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of look back and kind of digest and review, you know, all the energy he's put out, right? That's all coming back to him in relation to that retrograde aspect. Um, now, there are a couple of semi-square aspects. So full-blown squares create tension, dynamic movement. They can create drama, but they can also create uh, energetic openings, you know, for things to happen. A semi-square is like the pedal halfway down to the metal. So there's a little, a little bit of pressure. Um, you know, we might feel a little bit of energetic pressure to do things, to act, uh, but nothing super intense with this because there are no full-blown square aspects. Overall, the highlight, as I mentioned in the beginning, is uh, five planets in Taurus um, and utilizing all those Taurian energies. Wow, that was a nice synopsis of, of everything. Um, how long does, and I'm telling you, I can't understand astrology. How long yeah. does that retrograde last? Does, was it Pluto in retrograde? Yeah, so um, so Pluto is the slowest moving planet in the astrology chart. Pluto retrogrades last at least several months. Okay, it's, that's okay. Months are so, fine. Years? Oh, moving. No, not not several years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just months. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's fascinating too that we get to review politics. Um, it's fat. It's all. Do you guys see how astrology is playing out right now in our world stage and in you know even locally and obviously in your in your own personal life, right? So that's why even though I have a hard time understanding astrology, I always love having people like Adam on because it's so important. It gives you another way to understand the world around us. And this synopsis of what's going to be happening on the new moon is so helpful. Can you explain for one second? Because I just cannot get this. I should just put a sticky note on my computer or something. Why? What do we do on a new moon compared to a full moon? Like what? Why is it important? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so um, just to clarify, the new moon is when the sun sign and the moon sign are in the same astrological sign. So it, it, the new moon represents an energetic stillness time for planting like the foundation of like things you want to see manifest. Okay. During the full moon. So this, this is the time for planting like psychological seeds for things, you know, new things thing, like new moon. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. New manifestations. And then the full moon is all about culmination things coming to fruition during the full moon hopefully reaping what you put into action on the new moon yep 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 new like sowing full moon reaping nice nice thank you for that that's awesome anything yeah. else you want to leave us with um i i i think that's about it um good totally awesome i wanted to thank thank you so much for having me on Okay, so we'll wrap this video up right now. Thank you so much, Adam, for coming on. I've done many videos with him. Actually, you can see them. I'll link a few of them in the uh, description below because I will say this. Um, he did a video maybe a year ago about Garland. Um, and I'm telling you guys, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, 
when I, when, if you watch that video and you don't comment in the video below that it is exactly who Garland is <laughs> like that, that like all, everything got clear for me. I was like, Oh, I get it now. You know what I mean? Like it was just so spot on. So um, I'm going to leave a few of the videos we've done below down below as well. Also, again, you can get a reading with him. I mean, by now you, I mean, I've got my own notes that I'm going to be like, okay, Adam, what the hell is going on in my chart? Cause I need to know about this Uranus thing like <laughs> so you know you can you can find this stuff out it's super important to know these things it's just it's just super helpful to know uh, these things that might be coming for you at you and to help you right if something's coming to help you then you want to put on the gas right you want to take your foot off the brake and really go for it because you've got all these great astrological possibilities and and help coming your way so it's just a really good tool i think that uh, we should utilize when we can so check out his youtube channel check out his email down below thanks again adam for coming on thanks for having me all right everybody we will see you again real soon take good care bye for entertainment purposes only